This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Boisai, Parshas Lech Lecha. The first mitzvah that was given to Avram Avinu, of course, is the mitzvah of Bris Mila. And uh, the question you want to deal with is that we know, we have a tradition, that Avram Avinu was Mekayim Kala Torah Kula even before it was given. Right? That's our Messiah, that's our tradition. The Pasuk says, Ekev, Asher Shama Avraham Bekoili. Avraham, listen to my voice. You know, Avraham Avinu kept even Erev Tavshilin. Right? Even uh, the laws of, uh, in order to cook from, uh, from Yom Tov to Shabbos. So even Avraham Avinu kept the laws of Erev Tavshilin. Even first, right? Avraham ate matzah, he sat in the sukkah, he kept the entire Torah. Right. With the, with the right. So here's the question. We just ended the last uh, class with Bruce Miller, all mice with Bruce Miller. Oh, yeah? Okay, so, um, yeah, they sent me a message, you know, right before the show where I should talk about. <laughs> I told them, whatever you end off with, that's what we're going to talk about. You do it with the two? Did you do it with the two or with that? So, Avram Avinu was Mekayim Ka Tarakula even before it was given, with the exception of one mitzvah. There is only one mitzvah Avram Avinu didn't do. He only kept 612 mitzvahs. He didn't keep 613. Which mitzvah didn't he do? Bris Mila. Because that he's 99 years old and he still doesn't have his bris. Until Hashem comes and he says, You know, Abraham, it's time, you know, shine sight. You know, what are you waiting for? It doesn't get any easier. So, so that the question is, why is it that Abraham Avinu is Mekayim Kala Tarakula? Did Pidin Aben? He did, he did everything. He did Shuma, Meiser. He did, sure he did. Shuma, Meiser. He did everything. He did Shuma, Meiser. He gave Meiser, right? No, that, that is, so the question is, why did, he not, why did he not do Mila? Why didn't he do Mila? So the famous answer of Rabbi Yom Mizrahi, the famous answer of, we'll see about Pinyah Ben. He may not have done Pinyah Ben. But the famous answer of Rabbi Yom Mizrahi, one of the, what we call the super commentaries on Rashi, he's a commentary on a commentary, says Mizrahi, mitzvah smila lo'ikaima ad shenestavala. He did not perform mila until he was commanded. Why? Mishim di yodea haya Avraham nu shayte lehitztavasala. He knew he'd be commanded. Va'aziyah mitzuvah va'aisa. And then he would perform it when he's commanded. Shehu gadol mimi she'ena mitzuvah va'aisa. Which is greater than someone who wasn't commanded. So Avraham Avinu knew about mila. He knew he could have done the mila. But he didn't do it, because he wanted to do it on the highest possible level, which is when he would be commanded. So wait a second, so why did he do any of the other mitzvahs? Yeah. Why did he sit in the sukkah? Why did he eat matzah? Very simple. He sat in the sukkah, and he said to himself, let me sit in the sukkah, and when God commands me, so then I'll continue to sit in the sukkah, and sit in the sukkah as one who's commanded. But brismila, you get one chance. Right? You only have one chance. So Avram said, if I do bris milah before I'm commanded, I'll never have the opportunity to do bris milah when I'm commanded. And therefore, Avram Avinu, of all the mitzvahs in the Torah, the one mitzvah he didn't do is bris milah. He could have done it on bris, though. He could have been... He could, he that's could not have, the full mitzvah. He could, he could have taken himself out of being a mohol. He wouldn't, he wouldn't fulfill the mitzvah completely. So this answer of the Mizrahi is not so simple. Not such a great answer. As the Marsha asks, the Marsha in Masech the Yavama Isdav Kuf asks... And you have it on your sheet in number 30. The Masha asks that this answer of the Mizrahi is not going to help you. Right? Why not? Because you have the Mishnah to do it at 8 minutes. Because first of all, that's, a, that's a, a very difficult answer to say. He was waiting until he's commanded. And it doesn't really explain Avraham's whole life. You know why? Because what about the fact that Avraham Avinu married Hagar? Hagar was from which nation? She's Italian. She's a mitzvah. <laughs> She's a mitzvah. Even if you, you cannot marry a mitzvah, right? A mitzvah cannot come, the Kal Hashem. So don't tell me that the reason why Avraham Avinu didn't do Mila is only because he wanted to be commanded, because there are other things Avraham Avinu violated. For example, he married a mitzvah. Says the Marsha, this is a problem with the Mizrahi, because it's not going to explain all of Avraham's behavior. Okay. So what we would like to explore today, perhaps, is another beautiful reason why Avram Avinu did not perform bris milah before he was commanded. Okay. There's a pasuk in Sefer Yirmiyahu that says the following. Koya Amar Hashem. So says Hashem. Im loy brisi yoyman balayla. If not for my covenant of day and night, chukai shamayim v'arz loy samti, I would not have created heaven and earth. 
If not for my bris, there would be no world. Well, what is this Pasuk talking about? What would you say? Mila. Mila. In fact, the Mishnah says in the Sechta and Adarim, Gedayla Mila, Mila is very great, She'omalehi, if not for Mila, Laibara HaKadosh Baruch Hu God would not have created the world. You know, God says, Should I create the world? Should I not create the world? Oh, Mila? Fine, I'll create the world. How do we know this? Shenemra, like the Pasuk says, Kayamar Hashem, Im Laibrisi Yoyman Valayla, if not for my covenant of day and night, Chukai Shamayim Va'aretz Laisanti, I would not have created heaven and earth. How about Brisbane Absalom? No. Brisbane Absalom, he could have gone without the world. The Brisbane Absalom would not have met, would not have cut it. No pun intended. He needed Brismila. Right? He needed Brismila. If not for Brismila, God would not have created the world. That's what the Torah says. That's what the Yermio, that's what the Navi Yermio says, according to the Gemara Nadarim. The problem though is, if this Pasuk, Kayamar Hashem Imlay Brisu Yamalaila, what's the Gemara saying it's referring to? What does the Mishnah say it refers to? Mila, how do you read the words? Imloi brisi, yoimam valayla, if not for my comments of day and night. How could that be referring to Mila? You can't do Mila at night. It says, Vayoim hashmin, imam Allah. So you can only do Mila during the day. But you have a Mila. Imloi brisi, yoimam valayla, what does this mean? But the brisi, once you have it, once you've done it, you've done it, then you have it at night too. In fact, I'll tell you why it's very schwer. Because, simply put, the Pasuk, Koyamar Hashem Im Leibrisi Yoimam Valayla, is not referring to the bris of bris mila. You know what it's referring to? Kalma Taira. In fact, right, look in, the, look in Perkei Avais, right, the first, the second mission in Perkei Avais, it says that the world stands on three things, right? Shemana Tzadik Ha Yomishyari Knesset HaGdayla. Hu Ha Yoimar, Ashloi Shadvarim Ha Olam Oimim. Ala Taira, Ala Avoida. God created the world for three things. One of them is Tyra, learning. Says Rashi, how do I know the world stands on Tyra? Look at Rashi number seven. Shenemar, im loy brisi yoimam valayla, if not for my covenant of day and night, chuka shemaim va'aretz, loy Now, if the Pasuk is going on Tyra, the Pasuk reads beautifully. Because im loy brisi, if not for my bris, Yoimam Valayla, which mitzvah do you do? Yoimam Valayla. Which mitzvah does it say? Vihigisa ba Yoimam Valayla. Tyra. Just simply put, the Pasuk is referring to Tyra. Imloi brisi Yoimam Valayla. If not for the covenant that you perform day and night, Chukai Shemayim Rotsoy Sante, I would not have created the world. Yet the Mishnah and the Dharma says it's not going on Tyra. It's going on bris mila. So how do you read the words? Imloi brisi Yoimam Valayla. You can't do the bris day and night. So there's a well-known Taisus Yamtif from Masechta Nedarim. Look at number five. Af al gav dein molen el abiyoyim. So he said, like you said, yeah, Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yosef. Kal makayim harei misha shani mo hinei hamitzvah kayem es gufa yoyim avalayla. Once you have the mila, so the mila is on you day and night. But then he says, I'll read the pasuk a little differently. Give me a knife. You know, you have one anyway, right, for the mila. You're going to cut up the Pasuk. You read the Pasuk like this. Kaya Hashem. This is what Hashem says. Im brisi. If not for bris mila, now take your knife and cut the Pasuk. If not for bris, then guess what? Yoimam valayla. Day and night. Chukash memorats. Heaven and earth would not have been created. You read the Pasuk like that. Kaya Hashem. Im brisi. If not for my bris mila, you know what would not have been? Yoimam valayla. Chukash memorats. Okay. What? Yeah, but, but you see, here's an important thing. A lot of Bali Kriya, they have a disease called Esnachta-itis. <laughs> and a lot of guys, right, let's say this. Um, uh, if you read it like that, you're not you, I'd say the Kriya. If you don't stop after an Esnachta, uh, or it's also, t- right, Tipcha-itis. Tipcha-itis. Imloi brisi. A tipcha is what we call a melech in the trap. It's a, a pause. You need to pause after a tipcha. A tipcha is a major stop. The Zayar says, if not for a tipcha, the world would be destroyed. Now we'll talk about that a different time. But it, you read like this. Imloi brisi. Stop. Yeah, Balkari who runs over the tipcha. Mishnah Bruce says, Bevadai machzir and I say, you gotta, you gotta stop him. Right? You gotta correct him. But in any event. So we have another number of uh, problems over here. Number one, I don't understand something. What's this pasuk talking about? 
Is it talking about bris mila, or is it talking about tyra? The Mishnah in the Dharam says what? It's talking about. It's talking about bris. Elsewhere in the Dharam, and like Rashi quotes in the Pirkei Avos, it's talking about Talmud Torah. So what's this pasuk talking about? It can't be talking. Did God create the world for bris mila, or did He create the world for tyra? Because I mean, we were. In 2000 years until Abraham, yeah. there was no bris mila. How did it exist? Well, how did the world exist? Yeah, for 2000 years. What is this Pasuk talking about? Did God create the world like the Gemara Nadarm says in the Schos of bris mila, or did God create the world, as, as the Mishnah says in Perkei Avos, in the Schos of Tyra? I'll ask you another question. All right, let's go back to this uh, Mishnah in Perkei Avos, yeah? Shimon HaTzadik says the world stands on three things. Torah, Avoda, Gmiyos Chasadim. He left one out. Which one did he leave out? Bris Mila. What happened to Bris? You know, he, he, he doesn't like Bris. He doesn't like bagels. What, what is it? So, here, no, so we're going to have, I would say, ten questions here. Okay? So, hold on to your uh, socks. The first question is we want to know why did Avraham Avinu not perform Bris Mila before he was commanded? He performed all other 612 mitzvahs. Why not Bris Mila? Number two, why in Pirkei Avos doesn't it say that the world stands on Bris Mila? After all, the Mishnah says in the Dharam, if not for Bris Mila, God would not have created the world. And let's, let's see number let's see uh, number nine. The Gemara in the Dharam says, Amar Rabbi Eliezer, Gedayla Tyra. Tyra is very rich. Shomale Tyra, Leineskaimu Shomayim Ba'aretz. If not for the Torah, the world couldn't exist. Shenamar Am Leibrisi Am Leila. So I understand. You can only learn one thing out of, this, out of a Pasuk. How could you learn out from the same Pasuk, the world stands on Bris Mila, and the world stands on Torah? I mean, there's one Pasuk. It's telling us the world stands because of Brisi. What's Brisi? Is it the Bris of Mila, or is it the Bris of Tyra? Yeah, that's, that's why I have a job. Right? <laughs> um, so you have to see what's the connection. You will? No. <laughs> I have, I have a share. <laughs> okay. Now another Gemara. Very interesting. The Gemara says also a little bit later on in the Dharam. Davar Acher. Gedoyla Mila. Mila is great. Sheshkula Keneged Kal HaMitzvah Shevetaira. It's equal to all 613 mitzvahs. Let me talk about highway robbery over here. It's equal to all 613 since when? I know every morning where you wake up in the morning you say, Elu Dharam Shalom Shor. The Talmud Torah can I get, so the Gemara in the Dharma says, you know what? You know, once in a while you could switch. You could say, Ubris Mila can I get Kulam? Where, where did that come from? Since when? Since when is Bris Mila equal to all six hundred thirteen mitzvahs? Okay. Now, next question. That's question number four. Next question is very interesting. If you want to say that we have a covenant in just between me and you, right? Per, let, let's keep this between me and you. What does that mean? Nobody else knows about it. No one else could see. No one else could know that. No such a thing. Why is it that by bris mila it says zois brisi ashar tishmeru beni uveinechem? This is a bris that's between me and you. Between me and you. Yeah, now this is not my question. This is the question of the Eilus Ephraim. Bris mila is not a private. It's a bris between us and Hashem. It's a public spectacle. You have a bris mila. Everybody sees. Everybody. Everybody sees what's happening. It's not a, it's not a, some kind of secret. Not some kind of, so why do we, why do we say the bris is only between us and God, as if to say like only God knows about it? Only God knows about it. So it's uh, not a secret. Anybody could tell. Why? This is a question of other time. Why, by bris mila of all things, it says beinu veinechem. It's specifically between us and God, as if no one else could possibly know about such a thing. Okay. Hashem gives the Torah to Klal Yisrael, and Klal Yisrael says what? Not seven Ishma, right? Not really. That's the second time. But what do they say the first time? Nasa. Nasa. Which parsha is Nasa and Ishma in? Nasa and Ishma is in number thirteen, Parshas Mishpatim. Vayikach Sefer Abris, Moshe takes the Torah. And they say, But that's not what they responded originally. In Pashas Yisr, Parakia Test, number 12.
What changed? What happened between Parshas Yisra and Parshas Mishpatim? That first Klai Yisrael says, Nasa, and then they respond, Nasa Venishma. Very interesting. Look at number 14. Af Adam Arishon Yatsa Mahal. Adam Arishon was born Gamalot. How do we know that? Shenemar. Vayivra Elohim Esa Adam B'tzamai. God created man in his image. So if God created Adam in his image, it must be Adam was created already circumcised. Wait a minute. What, what does that mean? That makes sense. Oh, how do we know Adam was created with already Gamalt? Because he's created in the image of God. We're also the You know, we're the, you know, when you take a copy and you make a copy of a copy, you know, it sometimes it gets a little, gets a little yeah. Still a copy. <laughs> what does this mean that since Adam was created in Betzal, Aleichem, he must have been created with a, with a Mila. And then later on, the Gemara in Sanhedrin tells us that after the Chet of the Eitz Hadas, Adam HaRishon Moishech Ba'arlas Lehaya. Moishech Ba'arlas means he hid the Mila. He pulled back the foreskin. What does that mean? Like Why did he do that? Like the Mishyabna. Yeah, like, what does that mean? Okay. By the uh, Kriya Shem, you know, by Abris Mila, so you say in the Nusach of the Kriya Shem, Yismach Ha'av, B'yotzech Ha'latzav, the father will rejoice. The Sagal Imai, the mother will rejoice, the free bit. Kakaslov, like the Pasuk says, Yismach Avicha, okay, the father will rejoice. Vimecha, the mother, the Sagal Yoilad Techa, and someone else, the third person will rejoice. Yoilad Techa, the one who bore you. Who's that? Well, the Gemara says, Kaha Malamid is Ben Chavera Taira, Ilu Yolada. If you teach someone Taira, it's like, you taught him. It's going on the Rebbe. What do you bring the Rebbe here? He's away. Five years away. Yeah, the Rebbe, you know, he, you know he's, the kid's still got time before the Rebbe's going to see any nachas from this kid. You know? Why do we say, Yismach Avicha, the fathers will be happy, the mother and the Rebbe. Why the Rebbe? You know? What's the Rebbe going to be happy about? Why do we invoke the Rebbe at the bris milah? Okay. And finally, a question that... Um, we really all should be bothered by, but we probably say it too often to ever think about it. <laughs> and that is in benching. Okay. We say the first thing we thank Hashem for is Noidol Hashem Lakeno, Al Shen Khatala Viseno, Eretz Khamda Toy Rachava, the Al Shah Tisano Hashem Lakeno Mayat Sun Saim, Ufsi Sana Besa Vadim, the Abris Hashem Dos Rain, Mata Rosh, Shalimanatan. Okay, so the first problem is what? No, it's out of order. Thank you for Eretz Yisrael. Thank you for taking us out of Mitzrayim. Thank you for Bris Mila. Thank you for Tyra. Why do we first thank Hashem for Eretz Yisrael? First we should thank Him for taking us out of Mitzrayim. And then we should thank Him for Eretz Yisrael. I mean, the order makes absolutely no sense. Why do we start off by thanking Hashem for Eretz Yisrael? So Rabbi Yaakov Emden writes in his commentary on the Siddur, the first thing we thank Hashem for was what the ultimate goal of everything was. He took us out of Mitzrayim and He gave us the Brismil and He gave us the Torah so that we should enter Eretz Yisrael. So first, you know, we get down to the... First, we thank for bottom line. Bottom line is, thank you for Eretz Yisrael. And then we go back to order. So Yaakov then says the order is still bad. Why? Okay, fine. I'll show you to say, in Eretz Yisrael, good. V'yal brizcha shechasamta bivsareinu and for brismila? Does anybody know when did we get brismila? Historically. When did we get brismila? Right? The night of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, Hashem looks, He sees, V'ad Eram Ve'eria, we were naked and bare of mitzvahs, so Hashem gave us two mitzvahs, Da'am Mila and Da'am Pesach. When was Bris Mila? Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, before we left Mitzrayim. The night of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, we had Bris Mila. So then why in the benching, what? was it night again. Good kasha. That's a, a good question. So we have a share on that, but maybe Pesach time. Um, right? Uh, when did we get bris mila? The night of Yitzias Mitzrayim. So if that's the case, so the benching should say, "Al shen chatla v'senor atzchem l'tar rochava." Thank Hashem for Eretz Yisrael. Fi'al brischa shechasam to b'sereinu. Thank Hashem for bris. Fi'al shohit seisano Hashem l'kinu meretz Mitzrayim. And thank us for taking us out of Mitzrayim. Thank Hashem for taking us out of Mitzrayim. But why do we first thank Hashem for taking us out of Mitzrayim, and then thank Him for bris mila? It's out of order. Mm-hmm. So Rabbi Yaakov then says, oh, well, even though Klai Yisrael did the Mila Mitzrayim 
they didn't do the Priya yet until they came into Eretz Yisrael. So people who died in the Midbar never had it. Right. In fact, people who were born in the Midbar didn't have Mila at all uh, no, maybe until they came there. Like, so in other words, I think that like by Neufeld, right? You, you, you do a bris meal before you bury him. Yeah. So maybe over here also, when they buried him, they, they did the priya. Okay, maybe. But listen to Rabbi Yaakov and then saying, the reason why we don't mention bris first is because they had the bris in the family, but they didn't have the priya until they entered Eretz Yisrael. Like we what, find in the time of Yeshua in Parakeh. Excuse me, what's priya? Priya is when you pull back the Still. arla. You pull it. After you cut it, you pull it. Okay, so... About the sons of Moshe. That, you know, that was a long time before. That was... Uh, you know, they, they, may have, they may have had... But the problem is, if they didn't have the Priya until they came into Eretz Yisrael, that was after the Torah was given, so then the order should be, thank you for taking us out of Mitzrayim, thank you for the Torah, and then thank you, then Mila should be last. In other words, make up your mind. Why is Mila stuck in, in between Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and Torah? It really happened before Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Elamai, what do you want to say? The full Priya didn't happen until later, so then it should be listed after, after, after Tyra. But what are we stooping it in before Tyra for in the benching? I mean, this order, right? If somebody handed in this composition, right? Your principal, right? Yeah, yeah. Someone handed in this composition, you ask them, put it in order. They would fail. Yeah. They would flunk. They would flunk. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And finally... Yeshubalei Haleket brings down, look at number 19. The numerical value of bris is 613. 12. 12. 12. 12. Right, bris, base is 2, resh is 200, vav is, yud is 10, and tap is 400, 612. And plus the bris itself, that's a 613. Yeah? But that's a little odd. You, why, you know, why specifically bris mila do we say it's equal to 612 plus it, that's 613. I mean, you, you should be able to do that for any mitzvah. You know, every mitzvah should be 612 plus it is 613. But we don't say that. Specifically bris. Bris is 612 plus itself is 613. Okay. So let's see if we could uh, shed some light on some of these issues. We have an amazing story brought down in the Taisvis in Parshish Mishpatim, a story about Onklos, right? Onklos Hager. Onklos was the nephew of Adarianus Kezar. Let's take a look at it inside. Maise be Onklos Hager. There's a story with Onklos, Ben Achoise shal Adarianus Kezar. He was the son of the sister of Adarianus. Shabike shal Hizkaya. He wanted to convert. Onklos wanted to convert. Bahaya Mesyare mi daidai. He was afraid of his uncle. Yeah, he said his uncle would, you know, beat him up or something. So he tells uncle, look, uh, I need to go somewhere, I need to go on a business trip. Yeah? He said, uh, the uncle said, Why do you want to do, go do business? What, you don't have enough money? You're, you're lacking money? Here are the keys to my storehouse. Uh, you can take whatever you want. No, no, no. He says, I need to go out on my own and make my own way in life, you know. He says, I need to go out to the outside world. If you're just going to always give me money, I'm never going to develop my own talents. I need to go out on my own, right, to be able to deal with people. Do me a favor, I trust you. What kind of business deal should I, should I engage in? He said like this, he said, find something that's, you know, Cheap. down on its luck, something really low, plus, uh, you know, a, a little bit, something that nobody's interested in, invest in that, you can only go up. That was his advice. Um, like, the contrarian. Uh, right? Um, like, if you see something, you know, that's really down on its luck, be involved in that, you'll make a lot of money. So where does he go? Stock is low. Yeah? He goes to Eretz Yisrael, he goes to Israel. He says, he comes to the Shiva. He says, I'm here. He said, what's your name? My name is Onkles. You're, you're Jewish? No. You have a Mila? No. But I want to learn Tyra. You won't understand it. He said, why not? He said, because you don't have a Mila. He said, huh? You know, what does one thing got to do with the other? Because I don't have a mila, I can't, I'm, you know, I'm learning with my head. 
He went and he had a Mila Vilama Tara Haver, he learned a lot. Umatsu Rev Lazar Rabbi Shua Vero Pan of Meshunais. Rev Lazar Rabbi Shua took a look at Uncle, all of a sudden they see his face looks different. Amru Zela Zed, they said to each other, Ah, oh, it must be he learned Tara. He's a different person. Miyad Shabbat Etzlam Hisho Lisho Shilas Harbi, he asked his Rabbi a lot of questions. Then finally, he's making, uh, he's headed back to Adaryanus. Halach Ita Adaryanus, he goes back to his uncle Adaryanus. Amar Loi, he said to him, Lama Panecha Meshunais, you know, your, your face is, uh, is aflame. Shiny. Your face is shining. Why? Amar Loi Shalmadit Tira? I learned Tira, but not only that, I had a Mila. Amar Loi, you mean who gave you this ridiculous advice? Amar Loi Ata, you. You're the one who told me to learn Tira. Shamati Lee, you told me get involved in something that's down on its luck. Eventually, you know, it will go up, right? Shamati Lee, I went to every nation and I didn't find anything more downtrodden than the Jewish people, right? Than Tyrell. Eventually, they're going to go up. Skip a line. He smacked him. What do you do this for? He said like this. I wasn't interested in the Mila. Shebi kashti lil I wanted to learn Torah. So he said, yeah, right. But what's with the Mila? So we learned the Torah. Why do you have the Mila? Amalai, hayu lecha lil maitar v'loy lamu. Amalai, ain yechayles lil maitar v'loy mila. You can't learn Torah without Mila. Shenemar, magi devarav li Yaakov. Chukav and mishpatav li Yisrael. Why does it say Yaakov? Why not to B'nai Yisrael? No. L'mishu hu mohol ka Yaakov. Only someone who has a mila like Yaakov who was born with a mila. Uchsiv, la yasachin l'chal goi, u'mishpatim baal. Says Taisis baal? Baal, the Torah begins with a bez, ends with a lamed. If you want to learn what it says in between baal, the bez and the lamed, you need to have a mila. So the question we need to ask Rabbi Yisai is, why, in order to learn Torah, do you need a Mila? What in the world does Mila got to do with Torah? Seemingly, they're completely, cannot, you know, I couldn't possibly think of two mitzvahs that have no connection to each other than bris Mila and Torah. And yet, Uncle Hager is saying, you know, I wanted to learn Torah, but they said, you know, one, there's one thing, you need to have a Mila. Why? Why? So we come to a, really an amazing concept. And the concept is that the main function of Mila is not to cut the foreskin, not to cut the Arla. That's only the external act of the Bris Mila. But, we're going to see many, many sources, that when you cut the external foreskin, it removes somehow spiritually something that covers the heart, whether it's, a, it may even be a physical thing, it may be scientifically intertwined, or maybe it's a spiritual covering, and by removing the physical foreskin, the spiritual covering of the heart is removed, and now the heart is open wide to understand the Torah. But with the foreskin, the physical foreskin, the heart is sealed shut, cannot comprehend Torah Sashem. Who says this? Number one, the Eilul Ephraim. Eilul Ephraim was... We have Ephraim Lunchitz, the author of the Kliyakar on Chumash. Okay? The Eilu Ephraim writes in Ois uh, um, Ois it should be Shin Sadi Beis Shin Sadi Beis He writes like this Emes Nochen Adavar It is true Shehamila Shkula Kenege Kal HaMitzvah Shabbatayra Mila is equal to all the mitzvahs in the Torah. Shem is param, taf reish your beis. The numerical value of Mila is 612. Zulas hamila, besides the Mila itself. Ve hamila nikreis bris. Mila is called bris. Oisio is lo mispar taf reish your beis, which has a numerical value of 612. Imkein hi shkula kneged kula. Now listen to this. Ve oid shihi siba lamol arlas halev. The Mila is the cause that removes the covering of the heart. What's, in order to, have, to learn Torah, what do you need to have? You need to have a mind, you need to have a heart. Right? In Tanakh, the mind is called a lev. Uvalev kochacham lev nasati chachma. God put wisdom into the heart. No, why doesn't it say the brain? In Tanakh, the brain, the mind is called the heart. The Torah, be, you, right? That's the introduction. If you want to learn Torah, you have to have a lave. That's why the last letter of the Torah is a lamet. The first letter is a base. 
without a mila, your heart is clogged up. It's stuffed up. It's stuffed up. You can't understand anything. The cutting of the physical arla removes the arla salev. Mila is what opens the mind to understand any spiritual ideas. In fact, the amazing thing, based on this idea of the Eul HaSafrayim, Rabbi Kiva Eger Paskins, Halacha Lamaisa. Okay, they asked Rabbi Kiva Eger the following question. When you write, when, when, when at a bris Mila, so there are two brachas. You make, Asher Kedushanim B'Mesayis V'Tivano Al HaMila. Who makes that bracha? The Maya. Then you have another bracha. All right? Um, Who makes that bracha? The father. Why does the father make that bracha? If the Mayal is the one who's entrusted to do the mitzvah. The father's Mikuyim. The Mayal is just a Shliach. So if the Mayal is just a Shliach, the father should make the bracha on the Mila also. Right? You can't, you, can't, you can't have it both ways. If, if, what? So if he's doing the mice on my behalf, so let me make the bracha al hamila. If you need to make the bracha because you're the one doing it, then you need to say lach nisa. I mean, these are two mitzvahs. These are two brachos. That either the mouse should make both, or the father should make both. Either the mouse should make the bracha al hamila and lach nisa, or the, or the father should do it. So the Rebbe Kiv Eger quotes a lavush. That the Vush wonders, why in the world should the father make the bracha lach nisa bevrisai shal avram avina? After all, the mayal is doing it for him and shulcha shal adam kamaisai. Says the Vush, the lach is not going on the mila. Lach is that now that he has a mila, now you could teach him something. Now the, the kid will understand taira. Without a mila, the kid will never understand taira. Who is responsible to make sure the kid understands taira? The father. That's so it's the male going to make the bracha lach nisai. The father makes the bracha lach nisai. So listen to this case. Ah, so Rukiv Eger wants to know, what if the father's not alive? Right? Who should make the bracha lach nisai? If there's no father? So some Paiskim wanted to say, let the male do it. Says Rukiv Eger, no. The grandfather has to make the bracha lach nisai. So people said, the grandfather? If the grandfather is not commanded to make sure the kid has a mila, why would the grandfather make the bracha lach nisa bevrisa shal am ravinu? Says Rabbi Kivayger, because lach nisa bevrisa is not going on the mila. It's going on teaching Tyra. And the same way a father has a responsibility to teach a kid Tyra, the grandfather has a responsibility to teach a kid Tyra. So even though the father makes the bracha what? Even though the father makes the bracha of... Even though the Mayo makes the bracha al hamila, the grandfather can make the bracha la hachnisa bevrisa shel Abraham Avinu. Why? Because it's the grandfather's responsibility. If there's no father, to make sure the grandson learns Torah. Why is it called hachnisa bevrisa shel Abraham Avinu? Where do you say the Torah? How does that relate? Ah, so uh, maybe maybe we'll be able to come to that. Okay, says Rabbi Kivager that Torah and Mila are not two independent mitzvahs. They're really two sides of one coin. Because since if you don't have a bris mila, you, you can't, can't understand enjoy. one word of the Torah. Yeah, you could say it, but it won't register, it won't be absorbed in, in your mind. So therefore, mila is what allows the understanding of Torah. So we had a question. How could the Gemara Nadarim say that the Pasuk Brisi Yom Lailah is going both on the mitzvah of bris mila and on the mitzvah of Torah? It can only be talking about one thing. The answer is very simple, Rabbi Kivager says. It's going on Torah. But without a bris, you can't understand it. It's not going on two different mitzvahs. It's going on one mitzvah. It's going on learning. But without a bris, you can't learn. We had a question. Since when is bris mila shakal keneged kala Right? The Gemara Nadarm says, mila is equal to the, all the 613 mitzvahs. No, it's not, right? We call that highway robbery. Only Torah is equal to 613 mitzvahs. You're right. Only Torah is equal to 613 mitzvahs. But if you don't have a mila, you can't learn anything. We had a question. Well, if bris mila is so important that the whole world stands on bris mila, so why did the Tana and Perkei Avos not list bris mila as one of the three things the world stands on? There's a fourth. It did list it. Where did it list it? Torah. Torah. Because without a bris, you can't learn. Without a bris, your heart is clogged up. It's stuffed up. It cannot comprehend the Torah. Says the Oloi Sephraim, an amazing thing. An amazing thing. When Chazal tell us that Adam HaRishon was created B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. Right, remember? 
And the other, right? Look at number 14. In Avos, the Reb Nassan, it says, Adam Arishan was created mohol. He was created circumcised. Like, how do I know? Because he was created B'Tselem Elikim. Just like God is circumcised, Adam was circumcised. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. Because he was created B'Tselem Elikim, therefore, therefore, he was created with a Mila? There was, says Eloi Safrayim, look at Rashi on that Pasuk. He was created B'Tselemai. What does it mean that man was created B'Tselemai? Lehavin Ula Haskel. To comprehend. Just like God has Havana, comprehends the true nature of the world, Adam had Havana. So now the question is, how did he comprehend anything if he didn't have a Mila? Must be he was Gamalat. In other words, if Adam was created but Salam like him, which means according to Rashi, he was Lahavin Ulahaski, was able to comprehend the world, it must be he was created with Amila. But after the Khir of the Itzadas, where Khazal tell us his mind was clouded. So then figuratively Adam Arishan was Mashak Ba'alasai. He lost the Mila. The Mila is just symbolic of the heart being open to comprehend the Torah. And I'll tell you something very interesting. Halacha Lamaisa. Halacha Lamaisa. Look at number 28. The Ramah writes, L'chathchila, when you eat an animal, you need to remove the Arlas Halev of the animal. You need to remove, there's a covering, there's a, a covering of fat on the heart of the animal. Before you eat the animal, you need to remove that covering. Look at the Ramah writes in Yardea. V'noyagin l'chadchila l'achdoich arlas halev. L'chadchila removed the arlas halev. Why? Why? The Ramah says it's only a chumrah. It's only a zahiros. Says the shach. Look in the Sefer Rikanti ala Torah. That since bris milah, the bris milah represents the arlas halev. So how could you eat the arlas halev of an animal? It's going to be metame your heart. It's going to be metame your own heart. So therefore l'chadchila, that's what we do. Go, ask a butcher. The, the arlas halev of an animal needs to be removed. Mm-hmm. Says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, what? Only male, Because she may not have an arlas halev. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She may not have an arlas halev. I think the brisker all says that. No, just, yeah. Like that. yeah, yeah. But it says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, listen to this. The benching is not out of order. It's in order. First, we thank Hashem for what the goal of everything was, which was what? But then we go back. Thank you, Hashem, for taking us out of Mitzrayim. So what do you want us to do? You want us to thank Hashem for Brismila after Torah? No. We're not listing it in sequential order. We're listing it in order of necessity. Quiet. And order of necessity is, first you need bris, and then Torah. First, we thank Hashem. It's not we're, we're not ordering in historical order. We're listing in order of acquisition. First, what needs to be done is brismila. Then, what needs to be done is Talmud Torah. Because if a person does not have a brismila, the Torah does not register in his mind. Right? Yeah. It's very interesting. One question. Yeah. You know, you said this scheme. Doesn't let the heart to learn Torah. Right? Yeah. So when you take the skin out, uh, the hearts opens up. So what about the koys that they have to breathe in the, in the hospital and they take the skin? Halachic bris, halachic brismila, halachic brismila, halachic. This is not just a physical thing. This is a spiritual concept. There's an arlas halev, like the, in the chumash we say, umaltem as arlas levavchem. I'm going to circumcise the arla of your heart. Doesn't mean Hashem is going to physically come and do you know a bypass, right? When when the Torah says. It's not talking about, you know, um, cleaning out the uh, arteries, right? It's not, not talking Edgeplast. about bypass, right? Edgeplast. It's a spiritual process. Somehow, mental, by removing... Mental, mental cholesterol. Yeah. But that increases the intelligence of the, of, the, of the one who is circumcised? Yes. It's not a matter of intelligence. Learning Torah thing. is not it's intelligent. It's a rock you're you're to learn. Thing. Absolutely. So you take a, 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 a gun and do, uh, do the procedure... It's no, it doesn't, work. It doesn't, work. it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's halachic mila. It's halachic mila. So maybe taking the skin of the bracha of the of the brit mila that that the, the, the mohel says that enhances the uh, with the bracha. No, 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 the the bracha is not ma'akev. It's by performing the mitzvah. The mitzvah God made 
the Arlas Habasar somehow intertwined with a spiritual Arlas Alev. But that's the purpose of the Mila. The purpose of the Mila is by physically removing the Arlas Habasar, that somehow, somehow, that's the mitzvah, somehow it removes the blockage of the heart. Whether there's a scientific, physical blockage, that very well may be. Whether there's a spiritual blockage, that is certainly the case. There's an Arlas Halev, which is removed by the bris milah. Rav Pam says, that's why after a mila we say, Kishem Shen Nichnas Labris, right? Ken Yikaneis Latara. The same way we enter the bris. Now when you enter the bris, that opens up the heart. So now the heart is ready to learn. Okay, it's not enough just to be ready to learn. You have to actually learn also. So, Kishem Shanich Nas Labris, Ken Yikanes, L'Tayra, L'Chav Ah. Do you say that by a hair? Yeah, why not? I don't know. I've never done Me neither. My <laughs> yeah. neighbor was in a concentration camp, and he told me a story. He had a friend who was afraid to go into the showers because he would be identified as a Jew, so he undid his bris. Okay. Uh, that's, what, that's what we say by Adam Marishan, who is Mashach Bar Lassai. But no, uh, the Hellenists are the same thing? What? Right. The uh, in, uh, the Misyavnim. Yeah. Misyavnim. Okay, Rabbi, so just a couple more interesting points. Now we understand that at we say, Yismach Avicha, V'imecha, V'sogel Yoylad Techa. The Rebbe will also be happy. What's the Rebbe going to be happy for? What does the Rebbe care? The kid has a bris and the kid doesn't have a bris. Says the Sefer Bris Ephraim. Now we understand. Because now that the kid has the Mila and the Arla Salev has been removed, okay. now the Rebbe has, okay, I have something to work with. Now the, the Rebbe is very happy. Says the Ben Ishtai. Ben Ishtai says an interesting remez. It says in Shir Hashirim, like this, Eis hazamir higia, Eis hazamir higia, V'kal hatar nishma v'yartzeinu. Right? What is zamir? Zamir could mean pruning, right? Cutting. Eis hazamir, once the time for the cutting comes, the kal hatayr, now we could hear, hatayr could also be rearranged. Kal hatayra, higia. Now we could hear the kal hatayra. Because without a bris mila, tayra is not understandable. Okay. So Rabbi Isai, very interesting thing. Remember we started the, the share by asking, why did Avraham Avinu not perform a bris mila? Be, right before he was commanded, he he kept all other mitzvahs before he was commanded. Why didn't he do bris milah? So we're going to learn a very interesting marsha. Says the marsha, number thirty. Go one, two, three, four, five, five line, the fifth line, the fifth line, the fifth line. Look what the marsha says. You know why Avraham Avinu did not fulfill bris milah? He says, "Avol Haraim Kasa on the fourth line. The Raim writes, 'Ki Avraham Avinu kiem kol atar afilu erev tavshilin. Avol mitzvah milah loy kiem. He didn't fulfill milah. The Yodea haya da asid lehtsavasla. He knew he would be commanded. Vaziyeh mitzuvah vaisa. For who dachak? The Marshal says, I don't like this answer of the Mizrahi that Avraham Avinu didn't do it because he wanted to be commanded. Gam kasha. It's also difficult. Im kain. Why did Avram marry an Egyptian? How could he marry an Egyptian? Says the Marsha, I'll tell you why. Ava lefi shita seinu nicha. Dechal ger loy netztava b'mitzvah arach armila. Avram Avinu, who said, Avram Avinu kept the whole Torah? He only kept the Torah before it was given, after he had a bris mila. Not before he had a bris mila. Because before you have a bris mila, there's no, you're not even shaykh to keep the Torah. Ha- Avram Avinu only kept the Torah after he had a bris mila. So you'll ask me a question. Why did Avram Avinu keep the whole Torah before it was given, but he didn't do a bris? No. He only kept mitzvahs after a mila. So you'll have a question. So why didn't he do bris mila? He didn't do bris mila because he didn't have a bris mila yet. That's why. What? That makes sense. Right? You want to know, Avram Avinu didn't keep any mitzvahs before he had a bris milah. So now we have a question. Why didn't Avram Avinu do bris milah? Because he didn't have a milah yet. Avram Avinu only kept the Torah after his bris milah. What did he do until 99? Nothing. Nothing? He didn't do anything at all, says the Maybe Torah gave him a, a bris. No. He didn't, no. didn't have one. Oh, okay. According to the Masha, it's not a question to begin with. Because Avram Avinu did not keep the Torah before the bris milah. So you want to know, why didn't he do a bris? He didn't do anything before the bris. So you, know, you should have done the bris before the bris. Yeah. 
Uh, now, a person who doesn't have a bris doesn't do any mitzvahs. So now I have a question. Why didn't Avram Avinu do the bris milah before he was commanded? He didn't do any mitzvahs before the bris milah. Yes, That's he, did. The, well? yeah, he did shkita and stuff before. So, well, you were there? I'm saying uh, he kept the Zion mitzvahs for Yenoch, but to keep the 613 mitzvahs. What? First he gave them chalak, then he gave them basar. So you're saying he violated it? That was after the bris. Wasn't that after after bris milah? Yeah. No, that was already on the third day of. Yeah, the Masha says Avram Avinu only kept the Torah after bris milah. In other words, the mitzvah of the Akedah. That was after the Brismila. <coughs> and that's not a back. He does not have more than 613 mitzvahs. The Masha says Avram Avinu only kept 613 mitzvahs after Brismila. So, in other words, the prerequisite for keeping mitzvahs yeah. happening here. Yeah, prerequisite. So, you want to have a question why he didn't do mitzvahs before he was commanded? Someone who doesn't have a bris can't do mitzvahs. It's as simple as that. When did he marry Hagar? <coughs> 13 years, told, 13 years before the bris. He married Hagar before the bris milah. 13 years before. Did he marry her if he had a bris milah and had relations with her? No, he couldn't marry her because she was an Egyptian. But the problem is, right, the, the problem, we had a question, how could Avraham Avinu marry an Egyptian? You know what the answer is? He married her before he had a bris milah. Right. That's true. That's what the marshal says. But, Rabbi, say that we're not here to say the Marshal's answer, we're here to say a new answer. Okay? Why Avram Avinu did not fulfill Brismila before it was given? Okay? And this is really a beautiful answer. I have a question for you. We know Avram Avinu his whole life, he was learning Torah. How does that make any sense according to our share today? We learn today that it's impossible to understand Torah without a bris because your heart is clogged up. And if your heart is gone, you can't. So how did Avram Avinu spend his life learning Torah if he was uncircumcised? So there's a very interesting sefer, La Briz Habet, by Reb Lazer Ginsberg, art scroll. And he brings down an answer to this question, what he thinks the answer is. And that is, there's a medrash that says, who taught Avraham Torah? Who taught it to him? Who taught it to him? Says the medrash, his two kidneys became like two jugs of water, and they issued forth Torah. In other words, there's a concept, right? Hakloyos yoatzos. The kidneys, kidneys are sources of knowledge, right? Even scientifically, there may be a correlation between intelligence and kidney function, right? But that's what the Medrash says. The kidneys opened up and taught him Torah. So says with Laser Ginsburg, why is it that you can't understand Torah before Bismillah? Because your heart is clogged up. Adma Vino didn't use his heart to learn Torah. He used his klayos to learn Torah. He used his kidneys. So he didn't, he bypassed, he circumvented the wave. Right? He bypassed. However, we're going to explore a different reason. How Avraham Avinu was able to learn Torah before he had bris milah. And that is the commentary of the Param the Sahafla at the end of this week's parasha. The end of the parasha, it says like this. Listen carefully. Avraham ben Tishim v'teisha shana, shanim, Avraham was how old? 90, right? 99. When? Now listen to this. What does it say by Yishmael? He was 13. He was 13. He was 13. By Avraham it says, And by Yishmael it says, What does Rashi say? Rashi says, we know that the word ace always includes. By Yishmael, it was a bigger job than by Avraham. By Yishmael, it was ace besar al By Avraham, it was just besar al Why? Because Yishmael was a young kid. The, the uh, aver, that part of the body, was completely full. So therefore, it required a lot of cutting. But Adam Avinu was already an old man. The aver was already... Was already Part of it was rubbed out due to Tash Meshamita, Rashi, this is Rashi and Chomish, and therefore it doesn't say um, Ace Besar Alasai, it says Besar Alasai. That's what Rashi says. Comes the Hafla, the Hafla says a different Pshat. That's not what it means. You know why by Yishmael it says Ace, and by Avraham it doesn't say Ace? Because by Yishmael, two things were happening at his Brismila. He was cutting off the physical Arla, the Arla's Habasar, but by a and thereby cutting off the Arlas Halev. So two things were happening. It was Behimailai, 
Ace Besara Alasai. So two things. But by Abraham, when he did the Mila, only one thing was happening. He was only cutting off his physical Arla. Why did he cut off the Arla Salev? Because Abraham had already succeeded from the time he was young in removing and purifying his heart where he himself removed the Arla Salev without the Mila. How do I know that, says the Hafla? Because the Pasuk says, look at number 33, Atahu Hashem Aleikim. You are God. Asher Bechata Ba'avram. You chose Avraham. At first he was Avram. And he now became Avraham, Rashi says, where he ruled over all five added organs of the body. When he had the Mila, he ruled over his two eyes, his two ears, and the Arla. And you found his heart to be pure. Says the Hafla, you know how you read this Pasuk? At first he was Avram. 243. He only ruled over 243 organs. When he had the Mila, he now ruled over all 248. What were the added five? The two eyes, the two ears, and the Mila. So the Hafla says, shouldn't it be six? Shouldn't it be he ruled over his lave also now? Says Hafla, no. His lave, his lave was always pure. Why? How do we know his lave was always pure? Because of umatsasas levavay nem on the fanecha. Avram Avinu had already removed the Arlas Halev all the way in the beginning of his career. Says the Hafla, how was Avraham able to learn Torah if he didn't have a Milah? Because the reason you can't learn Torah if you don't have a Milah is because you have an Arlas Halev. But Avram Avinu had succeeded in removing the Arlas Halev. So Avram Avinu was able to learn Torah even without the Milah. So now you have a Kasha. Why didn't Avraham do Milah before he was commanded? For what? For what purpose? He already succeeded in accomplishing the purpose of Mila. He had already removed the Arlas Halev. So we want to know why did Avram Avinu, why didn't he do the Mila before he was commanded? There was no point in him doing a Mila. It was pointless. He had already accomplished what Mila was supposed to accomplish. Then Hashem said, I want you to do a Mila. Hashem said, so I'm okay, I'll do the Mila. But it's not a kasha why Avram Avinu didn't do Mila before he was commanded. Because Avram Avinu was already umatsasa, slavavai, nema, lefanecha. His heart was already pure. He had already removed our last halif. He already fulfilled the tachlis of Mila. He already achieved the purpose of Mila. And therefore it was not necessary for Avram Avinu. He already, he already did it. So now that Hashem commanded him, he said, even though the Tach has already been fulfilled, I'll do it because you told me to. But it wasn't, it's not a question. We went to, why didn't Avram fulfill the Mila? Because how bechlal did Avram Avinu learn Torah before, before he had a Mila? What about the Orla Salev? You have to say, the Orla Salev, Avram Avinu already succeeded in removing. That's the case. It's not difficult why Avram Avinu did not perform this Mila before he was commanded. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.